Hello and welcome to the after show of House Calls. This is the show after our live show where we continue to answer your pressing questions about health concerns. And today we're talking about CPR. And Dr. Pancho is back joining us to continue to answer your questions. It's been a great show already. And CPR is one of those literally life-saving issues that we all need to know more information about. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Pancho. How are you? Great, great. Glad to be here. Listen, uh, people had so many questions for you, um, especially now in this time during COVID. It's just so much to know. Um, but Samantha first wants to know, you know, in these virtual times, she needs to renew her CPR and wants in her certifications and wants to know how do you do that virtually? So it's great. There is a couple of different options. And one, the one actually I just did it recently is doing it online uh, where you're able to go through all the education pieces that you need to online and then be, ha have, be able to go to uh, a location or a site of tra training station and just show your, your show your skills. And so I did my ACLS, my advanced life, life support uh, training through that. So there's many different op online options that you have available to you uh, to do it that way. The other thing is you're, there's some uh, classes are still very much available. So our, our train, training center itself, we still do in-person classes, but the way we do it is of course with good social distancing, appropriate masking and things like that. So definitely get in contact with the training center near you. There'll be a number of different options for you. Oh, that's really good to know because I was just wondering how are you able to be tested to see if it works if it's only virtually. So I think you answered that for both myself and for others who are either getting recertified or certified for the first time. You definitely need to have that psychomotor feedback. Definitely. Um, this next question um, asks, how many minutes should a heart massage be given to someone who's having a heart attack in real time? So that is a phenomenal question, and it's, sometimes it's not the easiest of answers, right? Because uh, when somebody has a cardiac arrest event and you're giving, a, a giving CPR, uh, the good news is once you call 911 in the United States, people respond very quickly. Our EMS professionals in this country are great at coming to the scene. They'll come into the scene within six to seven minutes. So you should depend on being able to give CPR till help arrives. And, and, and that is what I tell most people is just keep go doing those, those push hard and fast till help arrives. And if anyone around you is there, pull them into helping you so you don't exhaust yourself so that you, that you could actually as a team be able to do this. And if someone doesn't know, just tell them, push hard and fast, right? So it's not hard to tell someone what to do. So, so that would be my feedback for you for that. And I think this question bears asking again. I know we asked it a little bit earlier, but you can't ask this too much because you can't be too careful. Uh, during this time of COVID-19, or if for that matter, the flu, what can we do, you know, in terms of you can't social distance if you're doing CPR. And then, uh, you know, if you do mouth to mouth, then, you know, people get scared about that. Can you give us a little bit more clarity? Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think I think that it's it's always a scary concept to, in these situations, especially with the pandemic. May it be COVID nineteen or may it be the flu that we don't want to be infected. Again, remember a lot of these are occurring in the home, and these are your family members, your relatives, your friends, and so you're probably already exposed to whatever they have in that space because you are probably within that six foot space and, and that's and that social distance space because they are family. Now, in that situation, you should not fear for that infection because you're probably already exposed. So do what you think is right. Do the CPR. Save that life. Now. The harder question, like we talked about a little earlier, is what do you do in a public space where this might be a stranger or somebody like that? And what we know right now, and there's a lot of research being done on this topic, what we know right now is that based on the, on the numbers that we have right now when it comes to COVID-19, that the number of patients who have a cardiac arrest event who actually have coronavirus is pretty low. So you can feel, feel pretty safe that you're probably going to be able to give it. now. Last, last comment, let's go back to the concept of, of breaths. So remember for adults, you're safe to do hands only CPR. So that face mask that you're wearing will easily protect you. Mm. Now, when it comes to kids, that, that's, the, that's the challenge with children. Most of their, their, their cardiac arrests are due to respiratory causes. And in that situation, they, they direly need those breaths. 
And oftentimes with the child, the parent is going to be there, the family is going to be there when this arrest occurs. So keep in mind, you have people who can provide those breaths. So don't, don't, don't sway away from it because when all is said and done, this is a child we're trying to save. So I think focus on those concepts. So if I understand you correctly, Dr. Pancho, if you're an adult, uh, basically using your hands should be enough. And only if it's a child will you really have to worry about that mouth to mouth. Is that correct? That, that's, that's true to an extent. And so the extent of this, and this is why I love people to go to training classes. Mm -hmm. And the extent of that is with cardiac arrest from adults, giving mouth to mouth breaths also long term will help the patient. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the longer you're doing hands only CPR, eventually the body is going to need oxygen. Mm -hmm. but, but if you are the first responder and you're needing to do what you need to do, doing hands only CPR is great. The outcomes are just as good as, as, as compressions and breaths, and we have lots of data to support that. Great. Well, listen, this has been helpful. Obviously, there are so many health issues that we're all facing right now, um, and so all the tools that we can use to help us, A, save a life, be healthy, are much needed. Thank you so much for coming back on the show, on our After Show on House Calls. I'm Dia Smith-Taylor, and this has been another After Show of the House Calls. Real docs, real talk. Learn more about house calls, real docs, real talk, and submit your questions at heart.org slash house calls.